previous session we have discussed about the global trend management drivers uh, and uh, uh, e economics, uh, technology and demographics, right. Now, I would like to continue that particular discussion uh, in with, with the context of the global workforce, global de demographics and global leadership competency development. Now, here when we talking about the virtual work and uh, virtually anywhere, so uh, in fact what is happening? So, uh, because of the technology and demographics of the workforce, right, uh, we have seen that is from India many uh, Gen X pe uh, 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 people they have migrated to the different countries and uh, some of them have come back also in India and now they are doing the pro uh, taking the projects from those countries and doing the work from India. So, their, their uh, objective is to have the cost cutting, to be an entrepreneur, to be with the family and that socialization process and their children, right. Because this is the generation normally which is returning after 10 years of experience. So, so by that time the children are growing. So, they are also now getting uh, exposure to the Indian culture which is they, they are interested. So, this type of the uh, situations in India is uh, emerging and uh, going successfully. Um, so, therefore, we have to talk about the how the this uh, virtual workforce uh, and uh, virtually anywhere is working across the globe you will see. So, in 2010 it was the 1 billion and they were that were the mobile workers were there. In 2013 and it was 1.2 billion mobile workers is there and in the US 75 percent will be the mobile workers in the uh, current and future uh, near future. Now, uh, if we are talking about the mobile internet users, so you can see that is how these mobile internet users they have been in, in, increased in internet users are they have been in, increased the global mo mobile versus desktop internet users projections uh, 2000 up to 15 it was there and desktop internet users are there. Now, this, this, this I want to discuss actually. The demographic summary is uh, here you will find the countries uh, and the, uh, that is the population growth 2010 to 2020, right. And the country the percentage growth of the population is minus 8 percent, Japan minus 5 percent, Germany minus 4, Poland minus 4 percent, Italy is minus 1, Greece 0, France 5 percent population growth. UK 7 percent, China 7 percent, Brazil 13 percent, USA 14 percent, Mexico 15 percent, Turkey 17 percent and India is 24 percent growth is there, right. And when we are talking about this growth, so naturally the Gen X people they are increasing. And if that is the ratio, uh, then we have seen in the previous sessions that is uh, how this technology has become uh, a, a very important driver into the economics also and also for the development of the nation. So, we find that is in certain countries there is a slow growth, negative growth uh, in the developed world is there. Uh, like uh, here we have seen some of the countries and therefore, there is a negative growth is there. And if we talk about the developing country, uh, countries, we find that is the faster growth in the developing world is, uh, is, uh, is reflected. In US, UK growth fuel through immigration, right. So, that is the population is increased in USA with uh, because of the immigration. So, less developed is equal to more growth is there. Implications are leadership need is a global phenomenon. Now, as the demographics are changing, population is changing, population growth is changing. So, how to be that leadership is required and that is the global phenomenon is required. And you cannot go by the uh, by the one culture or one system rather than it, it, it has to be the cross culture and there will be the variety, there will, there will be the integration, integrating the different culture and therefore, this leadership is also have to be changed. When you are leading a homogeneous group, then definitely your leadership style that is required to be different. I will be talking about the very important dimensions in the leader, global leadership talent development. 
and when you are talking about the heterogeneous group and then in that case there will be the different global phenomena will be there. Developing world all competing for the same pool. Hmm? So, therefore, in that case it is becoming the common phenomena is there. As developing world matures pressures from there reverse immigration which I was talking about the India also here is the example is given that is the reverse immigration. The reverse immigration has increased into the Poland, India and Mexico. And I, um, al already in the beginning I have mentioned this thing that is in India now that generation which have immigrated the 10 years back, 15 years back and now they are coming back to the India. Uh, deep narrow talent pools versus the wide and shallow. So, therefore, those who were the workers, those who were the doers doing the jobs. So, those deep narrow talent pools right? That, that is now the reverse because of the reverse mentoring they are coming back. Of course, the deep and narrow, uh, narrow talent pools is immigrating also, but that we will see how it is affecting the overall phenomenon. Now, here you will find the developed countries. So, the population in the millions huh, about the developed countries, the males and females de demography you see that is the how it has been the uh, in, in, in increasing. While when we are talking about the uh, demographics of the developing countries for the female, so population in millions right about the male and about the females right and this is the age group is there. So, for example, between the age uh, 55 to 59, it is almost going to be the 50 50 percent, right. Uh, while uh, here, if you will go by the 55 to 59, right, in the developing countries. So, here we will find that is uh, 55 to 59, it is becoming uh, the uh, more uh, is uh, going towards uh, as we going to the a less uh, uh, age um, uh, strata and then we will find the number of uh, female employees and that is uh, that is increasing uh, tremendously. While here in the certain age groups it is constant or more or less 50 50 percent is there. However, if we go by the senior age people uh, then here we will find that is the male, male workers right they are reducing and the female workers are increasing. Here we will find as we reduce the age and then we will find uh, that is the male workers uh, and the female workers right. So, here bo both are in, 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 is increasing uh, like in, in here uh, from the 0 to 300 millions so this population have been taken into consideration. How it is affecting our talent management practices? So, in, in the for the talent age 2020 the Deloitte has uh, observed that is uh, to see talent shortages in the following areas over the next year R and D research and development hmm, shortages in the following areas and that is a 38 percent right that is moderate shortage is there and there will be the 34 percent in the areas where there will be the severe shortages will be there. In the executive leadership it is the 31 percent is there um, executive leadership and while in case of these uh, uh, talent shortages in the areas uh, uh, of the executive leadership it will be the severe shortage of the 25 percent is there. Similarly, the sales 33 percent and 19 percent strategy and planning 29 percent 22 percent HR and talent here we find that is the 32 percent is the moderate shortage. In the case of the HR and talent the 32 percent is there, while in, uh, in the case of the severe shortage is concerned it is a 19 percent will be there in the case of the severe shortage is there. In the risk and regularity uh, 26 23 percent procurement and supply chain 25 23 percent operations 20 to 20 percent mm, severe shortage will be 20 uh, percent right and moderate shortage will be 28 percent finance 29 and 19 
IT 27 and 21, customer service 28 and 19 and marketing is the 30 and 16, marketing is the uh, is a reasonably um, observable and it is a moderate shortage and the severe shortage is almost uh, the severe shortage is the 50 percent of the moderate shortage is there. Now, um, here uh, this particular paper in which the country survey was done that is the BRIC countries, Eastern Europe, Asia Pacific, Poland and Mexico is concerned uh, and uh, of the 100 college graduates on average just 13 uh, high variable. Oh, so therefore, uh, you will find that is the it is becoming of the 100 graduates with the concrete degree, um, how many could you employ if you had uh, if you have a demand for uh, all, then the weighted average of the low wage countries is uh, sample has been taken into consideration out of 100. So, according to them only 13 average of the 13 they are becoming the uh, university educated young professionals and uh, the countries in survey are the BRIC countries Eastern Europe, Asia Pacific, Poland and Mexico name, name has been given. India is also uh, India is also here and that, uh, that has been uh, the data has been collected from here also. So, if we talk about the engineers right out of 100 that is a 17, finance and accounting that is the 19, life science uh, researchers uh, 14 and the analyst is 15 and the generalist is that is the 10. But when we talk about overall average and the average is becoming the 13 which are the high level. Now, the what is the challenge? Very interesting point is noted here good people even great people are getting increasingly shut out of the job market. So, what is the solution? I will come to these points also, but on the basis of this heading what is the solution? The solution is what India is doing, India is taking the leadership into the startups and the entrepreneurship enterprising and the government has introduced a lot of schemes are there and the young generation interestingly young generation has shown the a lot of interest to start their startups a small small startups and uh, when it is uh, spread across the urban and rural areas and that that will be the backbone of economy that will be the backbone of society the social structure though it is taking a tough time to change uh, and naturally because it is a question of the culture change, cultural change, pyramid change and if the pyramid change is there um, naturally uh, it, it will take a long time, but the satisfaction is this that it is started and it is started that uh, I find uh, the, uh, many papers have been uh, reported uh, that is the now the startup culture, the initiatives of the government of India that, that has been uh, uh, becoming uh, the orientation for the job market and therefore, uh, now the generation is looking for the, uh, the different education they are not going only for these uh, engineers and medical science rather than they are going for the service industries, healthcare industries, hospital management right and different enterprising is skill oriented and the enterprising oriented qualification that, that is very very important. So, there are the bargains to be had for those companies that know how to discover fit and aptitude through better matching. Uh, here it is becoming very very important that is the uh, fit discover fit and aptitude. If we the organizations know how that is how to find out the discover fit because what is the major challenges that, uh, we have seen in the previous session that is a talent retention talent retention is low. Why it is low? Because it is not fit model. 
if you are making the fit model then definitely in that case uh, the talent will be requiring to work for more time and aptitude is there for the better matching otherwise they will be divorce. So, to avoid the divorce it is made always uh, better that is the personalities are matching they are understanding to each other it is not uh, uh, monologue it is dialogue right. So, therefore, from the employer side and employee side also. So, therefore, this discover fit and aptitude that matching is becoming very very important. Many times we find organizations are saying we are not getting the right candidates, candidates are saying they are not getting the right organizations, they, are, they, they cannot work in those organizations, the work culture, the practices, the stress is so high that is they do not want to continue in that organization. So, these, these are the challenges, economic pressures are already there, demographic structure is changing, technology requires new demand. So, investing in the workforce development is no longer just a company thing right it is a country thing and therefore when we are talking about that uh, new educational department that is developing with the new education policy they developing the manpower in a different uh, um, canvas with the more employable skills an issue of the global competitiveness that that is addressed so, it is not the question of a, about a one particular country like India, but it is a question of that is the serv serving to the other countries also. So, when you are talking about the Vasudev Kutumbakam, so therefore, this is becoming the global competitiveness is there. Skill shortages are going to smack people in the face once the economy rebounds, uh, but the world war talent will be significantly, we have seen this particular session that is the talent war right and then it will be when the uh, e, e, after this uh, situation then it will be becoming the more worse precision and traditional solutions. So, there will not be the, um, uh, the these traditional solutions will work like the importing labor that is not the solution how because then again there will be employees turnover and rut will be going and you know, going on same rut will be going on. So, therefore, what is to be done? we require to understand the demographic trends, the nature of the talent management challenges facing the organizations are there. So, how to do that? So, there is a leadership, different leadership is required. So, declining the birth rates and increasing the longevity are the key demographic trends driving a rapid shift in the age distribution that is a demographic challenge is there and therefore, uh, it is affecting the supply of labor that we have discussed already. Now, when we are talking about the baby boom generations are aging with Europe and Japan facing the most dramatic shift in population as we are talking about the India, India is having the young, young country right in population profiles in old age dependency ratios. Uh, so, uh, in Europe and Japan this is becoming a big problem. Research has highlighted rapid shifts in the demographic profiles of many countries are there. For example, in many European countries face rapidly aging populations and changing demographics and countries such as the UAE, Germany, Italy and Japan will experience a significant decline in uh, very important point is that in the number of workers aged 35 to 44. So, really it is becoming a, uh, a very big alarm that is the when Germany, Italy and Japan, US where the number of workers is 35 to 45 years is getting old over the next decade and then what is to be done? So, we have a population dominated by immigrants naturally you require manpower. So, you have to manage the manpower they will be the manpower will be from immigrants or second generation young people with a non-European background because the European background people they, that, that will be becoming old and the, the to, to replace this that the young generation will be coming and that will be from the uh, non-European background is there. According to the Mr. N. Villiard, the, uh, the process starts with the selecting leaders who have demonstrated a collaborative mindset that I will come to that particular point that is uh, how that collaborative mindset is required and who were comfortably in network leadership. So, organizations focus on leaders who see the development of people as one of their important goals. To meet the future challenges, the, the primary goal of the senior persons is to develop the 
main power including the providing honest feedback. So, where they are lacking they can improve upon and whatever their strengths they should be aware. Carrier guidance. So, uh, not only in the one or two directions prime stream only, but there are the so many prime streams are now open and then you can choose as per your convenience is there. And therefore, you will find uh, like in many universities now in India, the arts have been preferred as compared to the science. And there, there are the learning opportunities are there. The leader of the future will need to be digitally confident and able to speak the digital language of the newest generation to workers is there. So, how to develop the global leadership uh, for the talent development, the global talent development. The 2020 leaders is being a global citizen in the broad broadest sense. This means being not only a leader who can work well across the cultures, diversified cultures, but also one who understands the value of working with the governments and non-governmental organizations. This is a very, very important point. I think very few literature have mentioned about this that is the NGOs working with the NGOs, how, how the global talent development will take place with the uh, NGOs in the intervene dependencies of the future. Anticipating the future and building the capability to address it is the capability required for the 2020 leader. So, what uh, that uh, competency is required that now we will talk about global leadership competency development this slide, how to develop. So, here you know, business and organizational acumen, managing the people and relationships and managing self. So, vision and strategic thinking, what is the vision and what is the strategic thinking that is becoming very, very important is there. Leading change, so how you are going to lead their particular change is there and the business savvy. Uh, because uh, here some of the points you will find that is the uh, we have discussed earlier, uh, but some of the points uh, which uh, which are required the uh, attention again and therefore, in that case uh, on the context uh, what we have seen the demographics are there. So, in that context uh, these points have been taken again and therefore, organizational savvy is becoming important. When 35 to 44 right that type of demographics is changing. So, organizational savvy will be also changing because the, the earlier generation they were used to in India for example, in India if we talk about. So, in India they were very much comfortable with the PSUs, one, one generation was very much comfortable with PSUs. Then the next generation came and then they have preferred the private organizations and then there is a economic disturbances and again the trend has started to make a job security and then there, there is a particular culture. Then there are a different nature of industries which have boom and then in place of the manufacturing the service industries have taken place. So, all these contests may be making the organizational savvy uh, that, that, that is becoming very, very important. So, that managing the communities in these NGOs and the uh, government organizations you know, that, that, that is required to be taken care of. Now, how to manage the people and relationship in the global leadership competency development is there, valuing people, the respect for people, understanding that is the uh, yes they like we have seen in the developed countries and developing countries you can compare like this also. So, in the developing countries definitely we need we need to improve the these uh, uh, our uh, the uh, the HR practices and in HR practices we have to find out that is when they will be the non-European will be less immigrants and then the uh, others will be more and then the valuing their respect uh, culture and values that is becoming very very important. Second part is cross cultural communication. I already mentioned about the English language that is that is becoming the more common language uh, at the global level and international level is there and uh, that is why those countries those who are not very much comfortable with the English language then they, they are also required to develop uh, this type of the languages. So, that the globally workforce become global and the, the leaders, leaders can understand the culture of the each participant, each employee and accordingly he can tune up his leadership style. 
the interpersonal skills they are becoming very very Im Im important some of them already i have discussed in the our previous sessions and the team building skills and in the team building skills it becomes uh, that is the how we are going to create the cross cultural unity so when we talk about unity in diversity and that has to be reflect in the team skills and the people are valuing each other they are having the respect they they know know the language they know the culture and they have the respect for the culture of the every individuals and as a result of which a, a cohesiveness have been developed and developing that team skills are developed and uh, this generation uh, young generation uh, it's looking for the empowerment that is a decision making and if we are able to provide them decision making or empowerment then that will be successful uh, the uh, managing self will be the inquisitiveness right so uh, what is important uh, like you see many times we find uh, uh, that, that the people are having uh, the earbuds uh, especially generation uh, x i am talking about and they they have no concern about the surrounding so therefore inquisitiveness is very very important point when you are talking about the cross culture who is sitting next to you what type of the in the, in the even in the office seat right what type of the culture is having it is not just uh, you cannot work in the isolation and silos you have to interact because when you are talking about uh, the uh, team skills and empowering others and all so managing the self is becoming a, a critical issue in managing the uh, self if there is no uh, inquisitiveness then that will be a problem if you are not curious to know others that will be a problem so what is important is that is you, you you know others and let them know about you that cultural exchange that international platform right that that that, that, that is a demand of the time otherwise it will be difficult for organization to survive second one is the global mindset from all these discussions we have understand that is the every country every employee will be having the different mindset and they will be working into the cross culture and the people those who are working in the cross culture their usp is required the respect the values for others and they have, that is called the global mindset so you know if the person is coming from the x country he will have these value systems if the current person is coming from the Y country, he will have their, those value systems. And in the organization, the parent organization, it itself is required that people ask, what is your culture? Now, you can't say our culture, we are Indian organizations, our culture is Indian. So, we have to say that is a global culture and not only to say, we have to practice basically. Unless and until we do not practice that global mindset, it will be very difficult to work in the uh, developing the global leadership for the global leadership accept others understand others and work with others now flexibility so uh, we have done uh, the uh, uh, work on the my one phd two phd scholars and myself also the topic of phd was uh, that is the mod scale of the managerial effectiveness and in the managerial effectiveness, there are the productivity, flexibility and adaptability. Those three dimensions we have taken. And therefore, when we are talking about the flexibility, HR flexibility. So, the, that leaders are required to be having the HR flexibility. Uh, uh, why it is so complex? Uh, because, because the people are from the different culture and you, with unitedly you have to create a one culture. For Indians, it is not a difficult because already we are saying unity in diversity, it is our culture. But for the other organizations, uh, it is uh, difficult because uh, uh, the traditionally, traditionally leadership was adopt our culture. But now, no uh, this type of concept is existing and it, can, it is coming about the global mindset. So, flexibility is required. 
So, whenever we are talking about the character, character working in the global context and I would like to connect here uh, with the character with the demographics. So, the demographics is keep on changing and therefore, the character is also required to be keeps on changing. When we are talking about the resilience and in the resilience it becomes the acceptable to all. So, we have to ensure that we are working for these uh, not only for ourselves, but for the others also. So, this global leadership competency development will develop the people and as a result of which we will find that is the how we can develop our talented employees. So, in the individual level how to develop that? provide the desired behaviors to inform employees learning plans to develop specific behaviors and skills required for a success in a job. A particular behavior will be required and the specific skills will be required to be successful in a job is there. What is required at the organizational level? At each level that is the new supervisors boot camp managing for performance leading to excellence. You see this will be the uniform always you will say sir it was earlier also yes I know that is in the traditionally also we have talked about the leading to excellence and here also we will talk about the leading to excellence. So, why we are going for the global competitiveness of the global leadership global talent management for leading to excellence uh, organizations and the executive immersions it planned and uh, but it can be more effectively planned in a given situation when specific uh, behaviors and skills required for success in a particular leader segment can be identified. So, organizations that identify competency based job and leader segment success profiles are 4.8 times more likely to rate themselves in the top 10 percent of their competitors based in the quality of their employees and leadership talent is there. And if they are doing this then they will be more and more successful in context to the global leadership competitiveness. I am sure that is the dimensions which I have talked in the talent development and talent management and uh, global uh, uh, talent leadership uh, they, th those uh, dimensions I feel uh, that is the are very very important and practically useful if you apply those uh, uh, I have no doubt that you will be global leader to develop the talents. Thank you.